Ladies and gentlemen, KK Mir, welcome to the market update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Well, today is gonna be my last video for the month of July. So this will be the last video for the month of July. So there will be no more videos throughout this entire month. I'll be looking forward to spending time with my friends and family. Uh, my families are visiting, uh, you know, from uh, you know two different states. They'll be staying here the entire month of July and that I'll be going on a trip uh, with friends of mine in mid-July. So I thought, you know, market has been pretty lethargic and so I think it would be a good time for us to take a break. Uh, you know, for you also, you know what I mean, uh, you know, spend less time looking at the market, spend less time watching the videos like this on YouTube. Uh, spend more time enjoying the summer, enjoying the time with your friends and family, especially when the market has been this kind of lethargic. A choppy environment. So, and I'll try to tweet things out as much as I can. I promise you, I'll try to tweet things out once a day, though, uh, and give you guys levels, uh, the, the moving averages, the oscillator, and all of that stuff. And if I happen to have a time throughout the month of July, I'll do a quick video. Uh, I'll pop in here and there and let you guys know what I think about the market. But don't be disappointed if there's no video throughout the July. Let's just assume that there will be no July. And so we'll go from there. Also, the um, you know the um, the 2021 June special invitation is gonna be expiring uh, on Monday. So we have three days here. If you wanna take advantage of uh, the mem Traders Club membership, uh, the yearly, the annual memberships, you can use these links to take advantage of that. Again, that the enrollment is gonna be closing on Monday. And uh, the enrollment probably is not going to be open back up until December. You can go ahead and watch this video right here. It's a five-minute clip uh, talking about the uh, talking more about the membership and the the special research report that I've put out for my members talking about the market bubble, the biggest one uh, that is going to be coming on your way. And it's always good to know the long term so that uh, you won't be all freaking out in the short-term fluctuations. Anyway, so market is up 0.7% right now on spider Qs, 1%. It looks like Dow's green today, semiconductor's green. It's been this a uh, mix days for entire year this year pretty much right we may be seeing couple weeks where not even couple weeks maybe like if, as far as i can remember maybe several days where we saw full-blown bullish day where all the indices and all the sectors being green right i've been i've been analyzing this market with you and, and looking at this market with you every single day and i go through all of this every single day and i don't remember maybe twice in the last one year not one year but this year last you know set six seven months where we saw like full blown bullish day where everything was green. It's always been like this where we saw some indices, some sectors green, but then other sectors are red, right? So it's really, really difficult market if you're just gonna pick and choose, right? Um, so, you know, small caps down 1% today, transport down a little bit. Same thing, same with the energy, same with the biotech. Uh, healthcare uh, made a move there about 1%. Their retail's down, uh, utilities uh, pretty much flat. Uh, home builders uh, down a little bit, emerging market flat there. Let's look at some gold and silver, and they are up a little bit today. So uh, I'm glad to see that GDX is up about 1.3%. It looks like silver is up about 2%. They need to find some traction, right? We'll talk about the gold in this video. Dollars down, uh, treasury bond up a little bit, VIX popped here. So in tonight's weekend analysis, we'll be sticking with uh, Spider Q's GDX. And the grayscale Bitcoin, it is all coming up right now. All right, let's go to the uh, 65 minute chart here and then uh, let's follow up with what we've been talking about. So, there's quite a lot of things we've been talking about in the last. Uh, in the month of July and month of June, right? The impressive resume guy, we talked about this guy right here, right? And it's always easier to say this time is different, but you know, you can see that this time wasn't different, right? John Templeton rightly say that the four most dangerous words in investing are this time is 
different. Well, it's actually that statement is actually for more for like a long term market forecast analysis. It doesn't quite, you know, uh, it's not pertaining to the short term fluctuation. But nonetheless, uh, it, 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 there's some weight to that, knowing the fact that since March, that uh, midterm moving average is getting respected. So uh, on the last pullback, I given you that uh, little Fibonacci analysis right here, and it came down to the 50%, right? That 50% it was very, very important, right? You see that 50% right there. It was very, very important because that 50% is residing, uh, coinciding with the midterm moving average. Not to mention there was a gap area right here, which we talked about. That gap was filled. So you can see how this level is extremely important level. Right, and then we gapped up, and then ever since then we saw pretty much parabolic move here. And so with that Fibonacci analysis, where it came down to fifty percent, well now there's expansion level here, four thirty three, four thirty eight. Right, those are one hundred thirty eight point two percent Fib extension, and then one hundred sixty one point eight percent extension there. So you can see um, it is not a coincidence or mistake or random occurrence where you can see that we got a little bit of uh, selling there a little bit and we kind of stop right underneath it but um, doesn't mean it has to stop there does not mean that it's a, it's a resistance right um, it could very well continue higher but what we have to understand is look at these gaps man these gaps you can see so many of these gaps. Once that down gap was filled, there are no longer any kind of a pressure, selling pressure. And then when bulls opened up this gap, which will be is known as the a breakaway gap, and then a continuation. That's a sizable continuation gap. And then we got little little gaps here. And you can see we get gap over another gap, another gap, and uh, we continue to make a move to the upside. And this is why we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. All the battle was fought right here with the short-term moving average reclaiming, the bulls reclaimed. And then ever since that happened, it been favoring the buyers we haven't even begun to retest that short-term moving average but before we get to short term we got this gap that was open this morning so that's gonna act as a support and then we got that you know short short-term moving average currently residing at 430 right and then market found another uh, rising pivot right so that's the level and that was with a gap up on yesterday's price action so you can see there's so many levels that bears have to go through. We got the gap support, we got the uh, pivot there, and we got the short term moving average before they can find any kind of traction to the downside. So it's extremely, obviously it's extremely difficult place to jump in here to go long. And then a lot of people, a lot of people like to do is because they missed out this, they like to short it. But remember what I said before, shorting is extremely difficult in this market because it can grind for days and weeks, right? And it's going to make things, make your life extremely, extremely difficult. It's better to buy the dip because we've been seeing these V-shaped rallies almost every single time. It's better to buy the dip after a you know, sizable a pullback. It's difficult to short, as you can see. And look at this guy right here, right? So you thought maybe you shorted here somewhere. And then when this thing made a new, new all-time highs, you closed out your puts with loss that's when he sees a plunge so you see they kind of stuff happen all the time why does this happen why is it such a difficult market for the bears because we're on this roaring bull market since the COVID lows and, and, and it, it attracted so much momentum right now we're getting just very like you know few or several percentages correction that's all it needs before a lot of these dip buyers rushing in but why does it keep happening though well people who've been trying to shore they failed miserably so what 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 they're learning right so what the market is continuous conditioning them to do is to stop shorting and, and so let's say let's say people shorted all throughout they've been losing money right let's say we see a two three percent correction next week what do you think people are gonna do they're gonna start buying the dip now and that's why we've been seeing this type of market this entire year very choppy and lethargic right the institutions ain't selling bulls who got in early last year they ain't selling cash people they're getting back in bears they're slow a lot of them start to turn bullish and that's why we're seeing these pullbacks getting bought up real quick here so looking at this price action if we do see 
uh, this becoming resistance, uh, you know, I, I'll put that level there. So that will be the first level of support. And then so 141, 141, 431, 430 is going to be the level. And that's the level where everything's colliding anyway. We got the gap area there. We got the uh, rising pivot there. And my short term moving average is also residing in that vicinity. Let's check out that oscillator and see if we can extract any more, any more information. The oscillator actually oscillator actually pushed all the way up do you see this you see this right here this is a first time oscillator pushing all the way up since when april 5th early april this is in the midterm a bullish signal you know what this is telling us bulls are flashing the flexing their muscle so last time when we saw that right here this market didn't end Right here, we kept going higher for another. Ah, uh, let's see here. It kept going higher for another. You know, until we saw correction, short term, with a very minimal correction though. Until so May tenth. So look, you can see this happened April, early April, and the market kept rallying until early May. So for the entire month, we saw a rally for the entire month of may when we saw that extreme overbought signal again extreme overbought signal is not a bearish signal it's a bullish signal if we can stay in that box right here so that means with that setup if as long as we can stay in this box if we get set up that means we could actually see month of july something like this where just can keep grinding higher and higher with the very minimal pullbacks remember these minimal pullbacks are gonna be bought up so quickly because so many people been missing out losing money shorting so just small pullbacks these guys want to buy that day in an attempt to make that money let's go to the daily chart right here so this is now we're looking at midterm here Right, so that's that support. It's you can see some usually um, these kind of obvious, you know, conspicuous uh, supports. Sometimes market likes to do some shenanigan break below and stuff like that. But this time, market decided to respect it. We've been talking about this support ever since you know mid June, and you can see that. And we wanted to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, and you can see we now broke above this level now, so we can see. So now this support is gonna also, uh, you know, act as support. So if this thing comes down, this level is gonna act as support. Not only you have the rising uptrend support, but we got the pivot right here, right? And you can see year to date, S&P is up 15%, NASDAQ is up 13%, I think SEMI is up 20%, and some of the other sectors like the banks, like the energy, they're up 30, 40, 50%. So we've been seeing some of that great rotation occurring this year because last year we saw a lot of tech stocks, semiconductors, hyper growth stocks making a huge move and a lot of laggers such as like small caps, uh, transport and the banks energy made a move this year, right? So what do we, I, you can't just be like, you know, last time we saw something similar right here, it looks like this. And so if this is true, so you can see if this is true, if this is where we're at today, could we see a move like this for the next entire month? Remember, this was this is April. You see, this is April. You see that? That's April. And this is May. That's a one month. Meaning we could see something similar with fluctuations along the way in the month of July with that signal that we saw on the hourly, the 65 minute chart with that oscillator flexing his muscle, right? Going, pushing it all the way to the top of his band. And then on the daily chart, you know, the price, let's, let's uh, annotate that right here. And then let's do a little circle there, right? There you go. And let's copy this and put it right there, all right? So we kind of, observe this and see that you know uh, if that same kind of a setup gonna play out uh throughout you know next week and entire month of july again i'll tweet things out you know i'll give you guys tweet. you know you can follow me at 2k kim i'll tweet things out give you guys levels on my twitter account also i'm on stock twitch and, uh, and if i have a time i'll tweet things on youtube but sometimes i forget tweeting uh, you know sharing charts on youtube so follow me on on, on twitter 
or stock tweets. Uh, and then I'll you know tweet out tweet my um, oscillator here. You know usually the, I tweet things uh, pretty frequently um, usually, but in the month of July I'll try to tweet things out at least once a day. If I have time, I'll do more, right? So I, I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt here, right? I do continue. I do want to continue to give uh, benefit of the doubt to the buyers at this point. Uh, trend is up. We got the higher lows and higher highs. You know, if I zoom out a little bit till going back all the way to the, um, you know, the election week, you can see that my midterm moving average never once breached. This is why you have to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers right trend is assumed to be in effect until it gives us a clear signal that it has been reversed and we do we see any kind of signal that trend is reversed no i don't see anything at this point i mean i'm looking at my weekly chart i'm looking at daily chart my monthly chart my quarterly yearly everything i do not see i do not see anything that qualifies as any kind of danger as far as a technical signal is concerned so i just want to continue to give a benefit of the doubt to the buyers and I want to assume that this trend could continue for the month of July with the setup that we're seeing right now let's go to Nasdaq here uh, Nasdaq also similar setup Nasdaq's making a huge move here P similar setup right here right you can see that like that and then you can see right here we saw a little bit of little bit of that move right there right a little bit of that um you know a little fluctuation right there but this move nonetheless is a little bit more uh smooth than the move here that move was a bit a bit you know uh volatile in the short term it was up and down up and down you can see my short term moving average is getting respected and retested for for i don't know for entire month of uh february uh this is for like this was like november and then this was like yeah for like two months but this time you can see it's much smoother here it looks like and we're just breaking out of this and same story here i want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers and i want to reiterate this man i just want to tell you guys that i just i still remember people are freaking out here not to mention people are freaking out at all-time high level people are saying that this thing is going to come back down to march lows uh this is a double top this is going to come back down and people are saying this is a double top it's going to come back down right one of these days maybe we're going to see more meaningful correction i don't know when none of us do right more money has been lost by investors to prepare for corrections than corrections themselves and this is exactly how it, it, that that statement by peter lynch it applies so well here. More money has been lost by investors for preparing for corrections and corrections themselves. And also you have to understand, you have to think about opportunity cost, right? You didn't have to pick the perfect lows here, but if you went in anywhere here and gave market gave us a great level to enter here and here, and even here and here, you know, you didn't have to pick perfect bottom, but there were other opportunities. So not only you lose money shorting the market, but you also have to count for the opportunity cost that has been lost. Why do you have to count for that? Well, you can't go full blown bullish up here now, right? If anything, you had a chance here and here and here, here, right? And so then now you, you just have to keep watching this thing going higher and higher and higher. Potentially, if we do see that month of July move, not able to do anything about it. And this is a terrible place to short, right? And if you, and you, you might ask me, well, okay, then how can I accumulate, you know, then how can I build my portfolio in this type of environment? Well, there's other areas you can look. You don't have to look at NASDAQ. You don't have to look at these, these uh, you know, tech stocks that are there they're very um you know uh extended right there are other sectors that are still lagging and still underperforming you want to under you want to know how to look for value and that's something that i teach my members here at traders club how to look for that value even if you're coming into the market there's always uh there are different ways different you know sectors can get into right value sector and you can accumulate and, and you know what i mean because i've been buying uh you know there, there's always opportunities you can find and i don't chase stocks if it's up too much though but if I can see a value in a stock, right? It's a good value to purchase today for looking at things long-term, I do, right? 
And so there's still uh, different areas of the market where you can kind of find that value, right? And you really have to know where to look, right? And you don't want to obviously start chasing things when it's up too much. So, you know, overall, looking at the Spider and the NASDAQ, it's, it's, it looks like, uh, you know, market is uh, getting pretty extended here. It looks like it. But keep in mind, laws of physics do not apply in the market. People thought that it was up too much on Q's, man, at 230s. Now it's 350. Just think about what people are thinking. People thought that we were up too much, like, here, when, when, when the market was at 300, do you guys remember? People thought this was up too much. People thought this was up too much at 330 on Spider. Now it's 433. Can you imagine? Just about a year ago, we are at 220 on Spider. It's 433. You see what I mean? This is kind of what I mean. The laws of physics do not apply in the market. This is market is well capable of doing the unthinkable. Just think about 2017, the entire year S&P corrected only 4 to 5 percent. The entire year of 2017, entire year, we saw two or three, you know, three to four percent corrections. Market kept climbing higher. 1996 or 1995, right? Market only saw two to three percent correction once or twice. Two to three percent, we can't even call it a correction. That's just a market fluctuation. You are allowed to call it a correction if we see minimum eight percent to ten percent. Then we call that a correction. Anything in between is just normal market fluctuation. So it's safe to say in 1996 or five or 2017, we didn't see any correction the entire year. It is safe to say in 2021 we haven't seen a correction yet and it's already in july so let's continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers and uh, if you're a long-term investor here you've been accumulating and you bought a lot of those shares uh, late last year got into some index funds and things like that and you got a well-balanced portfolio you continue to hold that you you know what i'm saying you 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 want to continue to let those uh you know positions to compound you know what I mean? We had a really difficult years in the last, uh, you know, three years or so. We saw 2018, right? 2018, we saw that abrupt 12% correction, right? This is 12% correction. And then I think that was like 10%. So we got that 12%, abrupt 12% correction. And then we saw 10% correction. That's happened 2018. And then we saw that 25% correction. And then we saw these 10 percenters right here, some of the corrections. And then top it all out, we got that just monster crusher right there, 35% correction right very very fast abrupt i mean scared the hell out of everybody you had a really really difficult years in the last three years right and usually when you go through those difficult years usually good years to follow so since we've gone through 2018 2019 and 23 years of difficult years not to mention these corrections along the way right i think there might be good years to come in the next two three years with uh you know minimal corrections you know maybe 10 15 percent or so along the way we're talking next 12 next you know two to three years right let's go to gdx here gdx is ah uh, it's, it's it's finding some traction this week but this gap must be filled and uh this is this, you know what i mean it looks like we might be there's a uh, let's see here. Maybe we got some of this going here, but really need to get up here and start doing something like that. If this thing start coming back down to the low, things are going to get very, very hectic for the bulls. Uh, we want to, you know, have any kind of momentum to be alive. You see this move? This thing needs this. This has to be some kind of a higher low. Potentially, we have inverted head and shoulder. Potentially, we don't know yet as of today. That's a neckline right here. So needs to do something like this. Start cultivating higher lows and higher. So let's give it some more time. See how it plays out. Let's go to grayscale Bitcoin. So grayscale Bitcoin. We've been talking about how benefit of the Dow goes to sellers. What does that mean? That means every time we see a little pop, it's gonna come right back down. Just like I've been giving it benefit of doubt, benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the overall equities and these market indices such as S&P and the Nasdaq. That's where every time we see a short term corrections market gets right back up right because benefit of the doubt goes to buyers well in a grayscale bitcoin case you know you can see benefit of the doubt goes to sellers right because every pop is met with the lower highs so you got the lower high 
and lower lows and all my short to midterm moving average right they're all declining right and so we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers in grayscale bitcoin right and like i said before you know um you really really want to be part of grayscale bitcoin i have to say this is better than here Right? It's better to buy on the dips versus uh, going long, FOMOing, chasing, YOLOing, right? Remember, Bitcoin has a historical record of going through Great Depression and the uh, financial crisis and the, um, you know, or, or no, Great Depression. Actually, that's a Great Depression, dot com bubble, and then financial crisis, all in three years span of time. Like the major historical, you know, bust, grayscale Bitcoin and Bitcoin as a whole, it experienced last three years. Can you imagine, right? This is, I mean, the whole entire market experienced Great Depression in 1929. Right, the dot com bubble was what, like almost like twenty years ago, more than twenty years ago. G financial crisis was uh, what, like 10, 12 years ago. Great Bitcoin experienced all of that in just last three years. So this is extremely, extremely difficult market. This is why so many people are hurting. I I know so many people lost in their entire life savings trying to yolo this thing, right? Just like casino, man. There will be like a very, very, very small marginal percentage of people who made it, right? Just like winning a lottery, right? and 99% uh, of people lose everything. So uh, you really want to go Bitcoin, this might be probably better. I'm not going to go long here. I uh, I just, um, I would actually, for something like this, uh, I would actually look for some sort of, uh, I don't know, reverse or something like that. I did trade, I do trade Bitcoin, but I only trade it. I was long, as you guys know, you can go check my video back in October. I was long on tire this move and I was actually covering it on these weekend videos. You can go check from October 2020 to all the way to like March this year and told you guys that I'm out of uh, Bitcoin here. But anyway, so I want to continue to give uh, benefit of the doubt to the sellers. It looks like there's another gap in this vicinity here. So um, again, this is going to be the last video for the month of July. I'll come back to see you guys, you know, um, August, looks like, well, August 2nd, Monday, right? And on, on this this coming Monday, July 5th, market is closed and the enro enrollment for the Traders Club membership will be closing also, right? It will be Monday evening time. Um, you know, uh, you can get a special rates for the um, membership for if you sign up for annual, right? For annual. So I think I think the biggest advantage, a lot of some of the things that I get I get asked a lot is that is this different than your free videos? It is actually whatever you see here is actually some of the things I talk about in my member videos is actually you're only getting about 5% of what really, uh, you know, what is composed of my analysis, right? So obviously the member videos can be much more condensed, much more com comprehensive. And a lot of those reports, uh, you know, what you're gonna what are you gonna see? You're gonna see uh, my current positions. I, you know, some of these, you know, we got we got the weekly reports and monthly reports and semi-monthly reports. So I'm gonna go through my current holdings. You know, uh, where's my entry? When I'm gonna enter next? And things like that. And not to mention, you know, the recently released market bubble report, which I believe the bubble that is gonna be bigger than you know 1990s is coming is probably already here and how to participate in it and i believe that certain sector is going to get hit more than others and it's going to impact entire market but certain sectors is going to get hit much much harder and it's gonna have a huge runs and so there's a research there and there are other researches you can look at about five six researches you can look at uh in the member area so if you can you know afford to get the yearlies right uh, feel free to just get just just pay for the monthly get the report at least then you know you know what I'm saying you know what the you know where the market is heading in the long term and then you can cancel it right that way at least you know where the market is heading and then you can get some extra stuff for a month right some of the extra stuff you can get there's a video lesson library you can kind of take a look at it and some of the technical analysis I teach and, and some of the things you can learn from right and then there's like a lot of uh, research on macro trend analysis special report such as this one and there's like six more out there and there are plenty of videos you can 
kind of educate yourself during that month and I'm totally fine with it if you just want to get the one month and then cancel it that's totally cool but if you think that it's, 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 it has some substance and you can actually learn from this and it will be huge benefit in your own journey in your own analysis for me to kind of guide you right because there will be market there will be market corrections and all of that so I think that guidance helps when the market start correcting 10 percent 15 percent maybe even 18 20 percent okay what, what, what are we gonna do here you know what I'm saying is this is gonna be it's gonna lead to a crash or is a correction is, is a viable right and how to build your portfolio uh, you know what are the stocks you can get into now what are the stocks I are you currently holding K? Like all of that. And what are the stocks are you looking to buy? I mean, all of that, you know, you can able to get with this membership. And so uh, with that note, I uh, I thank you guys for your, um, you know, your viewership and your follows and comments. But I really do hope that you guys go and uh, spend good time with your friends and family throughout the July, month of July. And really enjoy the enjoy the weather, enjoy the summer, and uh, really, you know, uh, if the market is lethargic, it's not it's not worth sitting there wasting your time and energy. I don't I really don't think. I'm mean, even today. I watched a little bit. I went out. I had to run some errands. Came back. I'm doing this video for you guys. So I'm excited to uh, kind of enter this month of July, and it's nice to have a break. Nice to have a nice break here, you know, in the month of July. And, uh, you know, spend time, quality time with my friends and family. And it's gorgeous here in Minneapolis during summertime. It's not too hot. It's never too, it's never humid here. It's great for boating and picnics and stuff like that. And so um, hopefully wherever you guys are, you guys also want to take advantage. And especially the market is being lethargic like this. Hey, it's, 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 I think it's great to kind of uh, take advantage of that. So you guys enjoy the rest of this uh, weekend and have a good trading in the month of July. I'll come back for you uh, in the uh, first uh, Monday of August and I'll tweet things out, the charts and things at, at, at 2K Kim, right? So you can, you can follow me there, right? 2K Kim.